boys, we're live on Facebook. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Jeff, my co-host today with a nice hat. Jeff, I like your hat. Yeah. We have Thanks. uh Thanks brother, awesome. brother from another mother. That's right. That's right. We got Nick, not Nick Baldwin, but Nick Nyhouse. What's up, buddy? What's going on? Good to see you. Thanks for having and, me. And Mike. Mike's gonna be the one that breaks it down for us for editing. I'm excited, man. I want to see what simple things you've got for us because I know a lot of agents have a challenging time when it comes to editing. They think they need all of this equipment first to shoot. Then they think they need all of this equipment to edit and you're going to break it down for us, man. So I'm going to pass it on to you. There you go. For sure. All right. Well, actually well, I've got some slides I'm going to pull up real quick. Love yeah. It. Let's like Nick Starks. We're going to talk coming We're about tag, that. tag team in a little bit. Yeah. The basics of this. Let's get started from the beginning. Good, good, good. Cool. Yeah, so Michael's he's he's the iPhone guy. I'm the Android guy. So we're gonna we're gonna duke it out a little bit and see who's see whose Wait, version who's, is. Who's the Android better. guy? I am. I'm the Android oh, guy. Oh, that's why so, I, I like Mike more. Now it makes I know. Sense. Yeah. So that's, I, guess, I, I got some stuff though. We're gonna we'll see. We'll see which one wins here. But <laughs> it'll probably be the iPhone. So is the iPhone. But yeah. all right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I got a couple couple of quick slides, and then I'll I'll do a quick demo, and then we'll toss it over to Mike for the second half. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tristan already kind of hit the, the first point on the head, which is you can do a surprising amount of this with your phone. I mean, I've, I've really been kind of surprised. Um, we've been diving into to editing on the phone the past couple of weeks because that's one of the main trainings in uh, business video school. And not only, you know, are the built-in apps in these phones able to do a lot, but, you know, the, the more advanced versions that you can get into down the road, I mean, you can do, I don't know, I'd, I'd argue almost 90% of what you can do on a computer. You know, you don't have quite the, the same processing power, but a lot of the editing you can do can really be on the on the phone and simple stuff you know just a couple quick kind of run through a couple quick things you can get do to get started here just remember that all you're really trying to do especially with simpler videos is you're just trying to make the video more enjoyable for the person watching it right so you want to clean it up you want to uh, accentuate certain points you can use text graphics to do that kind of stuff um, but you know you're just trying to improve the quality just a little bit so Here's just a quick kind of quick rundown of a few of the things that we recommend making sure that you cover, uh, maybe not every single time, but I would do them in this order. That's kind of the main point I want to deliver here. So number one is trim the beginning and the end. Um, pretty much every phone that we've seen, you can do that within the camera app. So you just pull up the video, just shot, you hit the edit button. I'll show you how to do that. We'll, we'll both kind of demo that. Um, and basically what that allows you to do is a lot of people when they shoot a video, they try to hit the record button and they try to start talking at the same time. And so it, it makes like a really awkward start to the video. A lot of times like they're not looking at the camera lens. So if you think I'm going to trim the beginning and the end of this, you can hit the record button, get yourself set, and then you can come back and cut that out later. So it's so like very, very simple to do. So that's an obvious one. Well, um, one you, thing can do that you, were, that you guys were mentioning beforehand Mm -hmm. and that was, uh, I think it was Jeff who said it. And I think a lot of people do this was that when you're shooting at the very beginning, don't, if you're going to do it live, right. And then use it to record it and then use it for other places. Don't be the one that says, okay, let me wait here for about 10 minutes until people show up. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't do that. Jeff, you mentioned that really well. Can you re-explain that please? Uh, you, nobody is sitting and waiting for you to go live. So don't wait for them because you just lose more viewers because nobody's gonna sit around and watch you wait. On the replay, cool. can you imagine the replay? Yes, yes. That would be, that's absurd. It's the worst, it's the worst. If you're like Matthew McConaughey or you know, like somebody famous, okay, then maybe you can do it. <laughs> um, but you're not, I'm not. So just get right into it because the majority of the people that watch your videos are gonna watch them later anyway, so don't. Don't wait for more people to get out. So funny. Very true, very true. All right, continue. I'm sorry. Just oh, had yeah. to add no, that's that. a good point, though. Yeah, people are always waiting around on their live videos for sure. So, I mean, there and there actually is not, not to play devil's advocate here, but you can do this trimming feature uh, on your Facebook page now. So if you do a live video, you can go in later and trim the beginning and the end. Um, so you should still not do that because it's annoying. for Especially the first people that jump on your live having to sit around to, to wait is not very uh, respectful, right? So uh -huh. I still agree with you. Um, next couple things we can, we can kind of cover, uh, color correcting or adding filters. You know, you don't always have to do that, but there are so many, I mean, obviously, you know, Instagram kind of initially made the idea of filters very popular. So you can do all kinds of cool effects on your videos just by changing that. 
Um, you can crop it, so that, that would be the next step. And you, you wanna trim and color correct first, then crop, and then get into the more advanced stuff. Um, but there's a lot of aspect ratios, and, and if we have a chance, um, Jeff actually kind of figured out the other day how to do this uh, on the iPhone uh, pretty easily, so I won't be able to show that. Um, and then obviously, you know, that's when you get into more elaborate stuff, so eliminating mistakes. Um, you can actually go into the middle of the video and cut pieces out, and that's actually a pretty simple thing to do on some of these apps. So, you know, what, where that comes in handy is if you're doing longer videos. Um, I see this all the time where somebody's talking for like two minutes, and then they, they stumble, they make a mistake, and they feel like they have to start all the way back at the beginning. And oh, it makes wow. it really frustrating, right? Because you can imagine, like, if you have to keep restarting your video recording, it's just going to drive you nuts, you know, oh, every dang. single time you make a mistake, right? So in this case, we can, we can show you how you can actually go in and cut that section out. The thing to remember there is if, if you make a mistake, just start your sentence over. Don't start back at the beginning because you got to have a clean, you know, you got to have somewhere clean to cut. So you just make your mistake, pause, take as long as you need go back, start your sentence over, and then you can go in and cut that segment out and people won't even notice that it happened. Um, you can add transitions in here. Um, and then, you know, where it gets a little more advanced, you can add images and video. So you can be talking about a house, you know, maybe, and you can throw pictures of the house into your video and you can do that, do that through the phone. Super simple stuff. You can add your logo. So if you just want to throw your logo in the bottom corner, that's pretty cool. Um, and then finally, you can add text, graphics, and music. So Music is a, is a great one, especially if you want to cover over um, any sort of background noise, right? So if you were outside or you're in a, an office environment or something where you're getting some background sound, um, even things like, you know, a ceiling fan or just like the, the HVAC system, sometimes you can hear that when you're recording and you throw some music on it and it covers it up. And a lot of these apps have that built in. Um, and then obviously basic Trex graphics, like an introduction where you can put your name on the screen. Um, I like that a lot because then you don't have to introduce yourself in your video. And I think a lot of people waste time by introducing themselves at the beginning. So just a couple ideas. And this is all stuff you can do directly through the phone. So you can also do this on the computer. But, you know, hey, if you're in a crunch and you want to just get your phone out and do all this, this is all possible. So that's pretty cool. Um, I wanted to also mention this again. I, th I think we might have brought this up in, in our last webinar. But people have, have questions about the aspect ratio, kind of like what's the format I should be using. Um, so you're going to see a lot of landscape, you know, obviously webinars, things like this are always landscape video, um, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, landscape is going to be big there still, but we put these graphics on the screen showing a phone because more and more people are watching video on their phone now. And so this is how a landscape video shows up on your screen on a phone. And so unless you rotate the phone, you're not going to see it very big. And so I think that's one of the downsides to shooting your stuff in landscape. So the difference there is you know, if you want to do something landscape, you turn your phone horizontally when you record versus vertically. Um, so that's the second one, vertical. You're going to see that on like TikTok, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, places like that. It's getting a lot more popular. And the reason is that it fills up the phone screen, right? So if you're scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff, that's going to show up a lot bigger. And every additional kind of millimeter of space that your content takes up on the phone is more time someone takes to scroll past it, which gives them more time to consider if they want to watch it, right? So I think that's where, uh, where portrait or vertical is taken off. And then uh, square, which again, I mentioned, you can crop your videos into square um, on pretty much all of these phones. That's a really nice universal one, right? Because that it looks, it takes up a decent amount of space on the phone, not quite the full screen, but people don't have to at least rotate their phone. And then on a lot of other like uh, devices, it still looks pretty good. So if you're on like a desktop or something on Facebook and a square video shows up, it still actually looks pretty good. Uh, so I just wanted to mention those again real quick. Um, so getting into this, you know, we're gonna start doing some demo here because I wanna make sure we have plenty of time for the actual demo. Um, you can try to follow along at home if you want, depending on what kind of phone you have that you can work with. Um, but there's some really basic stuff that we wanna make sure that we cover uh, really quickly here. So let me just run through a couple steps we would take and then I'm gonna show you, I got a secondary camera here. I'm gonna show you my actual screen and kind of do a demo. Um, well, so I, have steps. A, I have a question for yeah. you, Nick. Uh -huh. Will this work if I have a flip phone? A flip phone? Probably <laughs> <Black> not. <laughs> Probably not. I, you know, I, I was thinking about it because there are, there's those new foldable phones, right? The Samsung came out with. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, the they're like, like full on smartphones. So I think technically, maybe yes, but no. <laughs> okay. not, not in the traditional sense, right? <laughs> I was just um, I was messing with you, dude. Well, I know I figured, but you know, do you still, you, when was, let me ask you this. How long has it been since you had a flip phone? 
Mm, 2006. 2000. Okay, it's been a while. I don't think I ever. I don't know if I ever had an. I think I may have one, but I had. A, I had the Palm. Uh, I had one of those Palm reader devices, like even before smartphones. Oh, I had that. Yeah. That came out. You know what I mean? The remember trio, that. the Palm Trio. I was trying to remember the name of it. I had the Palm. It had the stylus and everything. That mm. was my. Uh, that's what I had when everybody else had the flip phones. I was the nerd with the the mini computer in my pocket. That yeah, was always hey fun. Nick, Nick, what what uh, what presentation platform is this? Uh, this is Canva. Somebody asked. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, if you like, if you like design, um, this is Canva. So you literally like they have templates, you know, for PowerPoint presentations, um, all that kind of stuff. And you just change your colors and add your stuff. And I'm not saying this is all templates cause Vanessa designed this one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's but it's Canva's but great. Let's, let's, uh, let's get real here. Vanessa is the designer. You, yes. You could give her a piece of paper and it could look amazing when she's done. So true she's quite an artist so yeah. she is the she's the artist but she's the one that's not on camera but is is present in uh, on the screen in a lot of ways right <laughs> yeah very true um sorry for the interruption dude that oh you're good yeah yeah so anyway but in terms of steps here just a couple quick ideas obviously you got to record your video first you know you just shoot it through your phone um then you find it in the gallery so if you want to start kind of walking along through this i recorded just a quick like 10 second little sample clip that i'll pull up here in just a second um, but all you got to do is find it in the gallery. You don't have to open up a separate editing app, at least for these first few steps I'm going to show you. So that's what's nice about this is that there's there's no additional uh, app you have to access. So if you're on an Android device, it probably looks like like the editing mode looks like a little pencil. Um, so that's usually the editing icon. If you're on an iPhone, it's a little more straightforward. It just literally says edit. So you want to click on that. Um, and then the, the basic thing you always probably want to do, and I would say, you know, most times, unless you really nailed the intro, you're going to want to trim it. Um, you just drag these bars on either end of the video to adjust um, and that's how you trim it and then you click on save or done. The one thing I do want to mention there is that if you're doing if you're editing a longer video um, some people get caught off guard by the fact that when you click save or done it takes some time so it doesn't just instantaneously save and what people don't realize is that your phone is actually creating an entirely new video. So any editing you make to it, it's, it's not able to just change that piece of an existing video. It actually has to completely create a new version of it. And so if you're doing something that's a couple minute long video, it's gonna take some time. So I've, I've actually had people feel like they did something wrong or broke their phone even, um, and that's, that's totally expected. So if it's taken a few seconds or even a few minutes to process, that, that is definitely totally normal. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to my secondary camera. So give me just a second here. And I'm going to show you on my phone. Well, just a second. Oh, this is cool, Tristan. Wait till you see what they've got set up to uh, show this. I figured I should probably unlock it before I switch to it. Okay, I, now I unlocked it. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this is my uh, my secondary camera here, and I'm going to kind of do a quick walkthrough. So. Um, if you're watching at home, I'm going to stop the share for now so that the, the screens all get a lot bigger. Um, and you might want to make your, your uh, screen full screen at this point so you can see this really well. Okay, so this is again, this is an Android device. This is, an, uh, this is a Galaxy S9 Plus. So it's an it's a over two-year-old phone, but it does still for, uh, film in 4K. When it first came out, it was pretty cutting edge, but it's a little bit dated at this point. So what I did here is I shot a video. Let me go back to my camera app. So here I am in my camera app. So that's the camera that we're, where you're watching this through right now. So it's almost like a, you're seeing yourself, right? Um, so what we do is we're going to go into the gallery. So first thing we do is come down here and we click on this button. What this does is open the most recent video that you've shot, okay? So if you've recorded something on your phone, it should be probably the first thing that comes up. But obviously, you can scroll back and forth and access any other videos. So if you're on a Galaxy device, which we're going to cover first, what you do is just click on the little pencil looking icon at the bottom here. And that takes you into the basic editing, right? So the first thing I'll show you is the first thing I mentioned earlier, which is trimming. So you'll see here at the beginning and the end of the video, there's a little white kind of bar. Um, and if you hold down on that for a second, and it's kind of finicky, but you got to get, so you get your finger there and you can see, now you see how it's moving. So what, what I'm doing is as I drag that back and forth, that's my trim. So that's gonna be where my video starts now. So if I wanna bring it over, you know, so typically when you, when you start recording, maybe you're looking down or something like that. 
So we can drag this little bar over. That's going to fix the beginning of the video. And then same thing with the end. You just hold down for a second and you start dragging that bar as well. And then that's going to give you a clean ending to your video. So a lot of times you, you see how I'm looking down right there. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that is usually what happens when you go to hit the stop button, right? Because you're recording a selfie video and you look down to hit the stop button. Um, that's what you're going to get. So I'm usually going to try to eliminate that part. Okay, so that's what I would do there. So step number one, that's how to trim. Pretty straightforward. You should probably almost always do that unless you totally nailed the beginning and the end. I do see a lot of people skip this step on the end of the video. It's not the end of the world, but obviously it's going to make it look a little more professional. A um, couple other things you can do here. So the next button uh, as you go over from the left is going to be where you adjust the color. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And so what's cool in here is you have all these uh, preset filters, right? So you can come in here and you can play around You can go to retro You can add the, this vignette, which is kind of a cool feature there. Um, so, you know, this is, I'm not going to tell you which one of these to use. It's really going to depend on your personal preference, but this is nice because it's going to allow you to try a lot of different things, kind of look for, you know, you can put it in grayscale. This one's cartoon. So it's kind of fun, right? You can turn yourself into a cartoon. Let's see what that looks like when I play it. Well, there I am. That's me as a cartoon. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, so you can play around with this stuff, right? And if you don't like what you found, you just come back and click on original. Pretty simple, right? So those are a couple steps that are, that are super simple to do. Um, and if you want to go a little more advanced, you can come over here. Actually, let me, I'll come back to that later. But so that's, that's basic, you know, kind of filter. Now, the next two things I want to show you uh, from what we found are only available on the Galaxy devices or Android devices. So remember, I was going to make my argument for why, um, you know, Android's better in some cases. We'll see if this works. But so here's yeah. the first one, which is face editing, which is this is something that's built in. So you can do this in a lot of other apps, um, but this is something that's literally built in here. So, so I don't know if you can see this closely enough, yeah. um, but watch, watch what happens to my eyes when I drag this over. I didn't see anything. Oh, you didn't see it? My eyes got bigger. Kind of subtle. It's subtle. I think, it's subtle, I think but I see it. I think that's fake yeah. news. We still like <laughs> well, Try to get here, get closer. <laughs> okay. There I am, up, up close. So I'm gonna, let me try to, try to focus this again. All right, see my eyes getting smaller? I see Jeff getting closer to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's about I mean, all I see, dude. Let me try jawline now. So I'm gonna try the jawline. See, look, I'm thin oh, now. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, see I see that. that. That's oh, creepy. yeah, I see. I see your chick. Your cheeks got slimmer. Right. That's creepy. Yeah, so that's, the, that's the jawline. I know. It's all creepy. I mean, now I, I know I, why your phone doesn't have it. It's super creepy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's the here's the third one. This is this is one you you see fairly often because this is built into a lot of apps. But it's like your skin your skin tone, so like smooths out. And I, I don't know if my camera is focused enough. Let me see if I can adjust that. But I don't know if you can say that moving back and forth. That's a pretty common one, right? Where it kind of like yeah. smooths smooths out your skin. So I don't know. I, I think this is all weird. I would not do any of this stuff to be honest. But um, this like to me this reminds me of like agents that have like a 15 year old picture on their business card, you know, where it's like <laughs> way out of date. Um, this is kind of same sort of thing where it's like this is this is all fake. So I'm I'm gonna turn it all off because I'm fatter than I than I was applying there. Anyway, so those are kind of fun. I mean, I, you know, again, I don't know how you're often you're going to use that kind of stuff, but it is possible. Let me refocus this one more time. Okay. And then last thing I want to show, and I'm going to kick it over to Michael. All right. Last thing here, and this is another one that uh, is a really basic feature, but it can be helpful for just adding a little bit more information to your video. So this is, this is the feature where you can add some text. So I'm just going to add like, hi, LCA. All right. Check so that out, Tristan. That's that's better than iMovie right there. Yeah. I like so you that. can change, you know, you can change the background, kind of what the shading looks like. You can align it differently. So we'll put it in the middle. Um, you can change the Dude, style of the text, you know. That that's like that's like stories. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and then you can come over here and you can change the color. I don't know if I can find the the LCA colors or not. That's it. I'm switching to an Android. Is that Dude, it? That's all it takes? 
Just get the app called Clips. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. So this stuff, I mean, this is not, this is not fancy, but so you can put that in, you know, throw something in your video. So just a couple basic things you can do. Obviously you can do a lot more, um, but this is all within the, the camera editing app itself, or sorry, the camera app itself, right? So this is not having to open anything additional. Obviously, as soon as you take that step, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do. Um, if we get time, I have a slide with just a, you know, a few other uh, apps that people can use. Um, but that gives you a couple of basics. So that is my portion of this. I'm going to kick it back over to my other camera real quick here. Give me a second. I'm going to go back to the slides for a second. While you're doing okay. that, we've got a couple of questions. Going yeah, as I say, so it's a good chance to take some questions. Um, and then while, while we're doing that, between these two demos, uh, we had this slide in our last presentation and people were asking about it. So I just want to make sure you put it up here again. <laughs> Um, but we created uh, through Business Video School a series of so far 14 tips on how to do video almost exclusively. I think every single one was with a phone, right, guys? I don't know that we had anything yet that was any more advanced than that. Super so we're helpful. talking, yeah, I mean, we're talking things like how to go live on Facebook, um, how, to, how to control your lighting, how to have good sound, um, just really all of the kind of fundamental basic rules of using video in your business. So if you, so I want to just clarify because we, I don't think I explained this very well last time. So if you're going to send this text, the way it works is you want to send a text message to the phone number 44222. So when you open up your phone, you just put just 44222 as the phone number. And then the text, the body of the text is just one block. There's no space in it. it just says learn video. So all one word, learn video, nothing else, not your name or anything. And then when you text that in, it's going to respond and say, what's your email address? And then you will receive over the next 14 days, um, all 14 of our tips that we've created so far. And then once we've, we've exhausted those, like we already have a couple more, I think that Michael's put together. Um, we're going to try to have a new one at least every week. So we're just going to continue providing kind of free education on, on video with your phone. So just want to mention that uh, real quick, real yeah, quick. We yes, play. we're going to, we're, we're going to iPhone next. So somebody asked if we're going to do iPhone. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And then um, somebody said, this is not fancy in quotations. What would be considered fancy? Well, like, I mean, iMovie is going to be kind of a step beyond what I just showed you because this was, this was not even getting into an editing app. And then beyond that, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of fancy. Um, you know, I think Premiere Pro has a mobile version. I, I use something called Viva Video, um, which I consider to be on the on the kind of very fancy end in terms of all you can do. Um, the problem is the fancier it gets, the more daunting it is to use, right? Because a lot of those higher end apps, they literally look like desktop editors. So you've got your timeline, you've got sometimes multiple layers for the timeline. And, you know, it's just it's just a lot to kind of understand. So, you know, we always try to start with this. But if you are more advanced and you want to get into that stuff, um, there, there, are, there are a couple that are, that, so, so Viva Video is, is the one that, that I use quite a bit that's got a lot of the additional features uh, that you might want to try. Yeah. Guys, uh, Nick, if, if you're looking for more apps in regards to editing and you want to go super fancy, I'm putting up a link to a YouTube video I made with a lot of different editing apps. It's in the chat box. Take a look. If you can't find it, just find me on YouTube. It's a video I did specifically for this called Top Apps for Video 2020. And I go super deep into them just so you can download them, look at them, just use Perfect. them. But two, two, two quick questions, uh, Nick. One, um, Frank, Frank said that he texted and gave his email but never received anything. Uh, so you can, can you quickly explain what to do one, real, real fast again on this? Well, so if you did submit your email address, there's two possibilities. One is that it, there was just a typo in it. So if, if it doesn't recognize it as an act, because I think we had at least 10 that have come in that, that just image, like automatically got kicked out because they weren't formatted correctly. So try it again. Just go ahead and submit and kind of double check that you spelled it all out correctly. And then second thing is check your spam folder. Because um, we, we have had a few that have ended up in the spam folder um, if neither of those work, um, then just send us a message at the, on the Business Video School page. Um, maybe we can link to that when the, the webinar is done. Or I, I can throw in the chat once Michael takes over. Um, and uh, just send us a message and we'll look into it to figure it out. I just don't ask for your email okay. on, a, on a public forum like this. So message me there and we'll, yeah, we'll sort it out for you. Um, and then the, what, was, what was the app you were using, Nick? Uh, right now? On the Android there? Well, what just I was now, doing, when you were using the editing. No, uh, it's just the camera. So it's, it's literally built into the, the gallery app. 
So when you shoot a video, you just open the video as you would just to like show it to a friend or email it to somebody or whatever you do with it. And then you click the edit button and all of the stuff I just showed you if you're, and this is specifically a Galaxy S9 Plus. So if you're on any other device, I can't vouch for exactly what it looks like, but uh, on, if you're on Galaxy phones and most Androids, you should see most of those features just directly in there. So it's not a, it's not a separate app at all. There you go. Cool. And, and we are going to cover some apps here later in the webinar. So let's keep going. Right. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to stop my share and Michael is going to take over. Great. Cool. Let's see if we can get this shared here. What's up, Marty McFly? Yo. What's happening? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, he's wearing the hat. Come on. Oh, I get it. I just noticed that when I you went down, I was like, what? <laughs> Dude. All right, let me see if I get this shared here. I'm not coming up with any uh, mirroring options. So what we're going to look at, go over is basically the same stuff. Um, iMovie is built into all, all iPhones. So... Um, if you want to edit this stuff, you don't have to download anything extra. You can do some of this stuff right in the camera app, just like Nick did. Um, but then on the other hand, you can do a little bit more in iMovie. So it's all built in, but you do have to switch apps in order to get some of that stuff like titles. Um, let's see here. I'm having a hard time coming up with my mirroring option to share. Let's mm. see. You're going to have to... One. Let me get one more try here. Yeah. Let me make you go host just in case. No, I think we're good. We're good. Looks like it might be working. All right. Well, I made you co host anyway. There just in case. There we go. There it is. All right. All right. So, um, right in the camera app, when you go to a video, um, you can quickly, easily edit and trim just like Nick did. So um, we'll go up to the top right. And again, you've got these little bars on the side, on the left and the right here, and I can just drag to cut off the point where I'm starting the video right before I start to wave. And then again, right at the end, same thing like Nick did right before I turn it off. Mm -hmm. And if you do nothing else, I mean, that is such a big thing just to clean it up to make it look like you've done something to the video. Um, you've also got a couple of other options in there. Um, you can adjust some of the, the, the color. Um, you can adjust the exposure a bit, some of the, the contrast. You can put some filters on it, um, just like on the Android. Again, this is all really similar stuff. Um, and then you can also go over to the uh, bottom here to the crop option. And this is a really great tip uh, that I actually learned from Jeff um, just uh, a couple of days ago on how to create a square video in an iPhone. So um, at the very top right, you've got those um, little squares within a square there. When you click on that, um, it gives you options at the bottom here to uh, do different aspect ratios for your video. So uh, I can just hit square at the bottom and it automatically gives me a square video ready for, uh, ready for Facebook. So I can then readjust it in here and I'm ready to go. I think that's a really awesome feature. Um, if you're really Love looking, that. if you're looking to like fill up the screen on a, on, a, on a mobile device as much as possible when you're posting on Facebook, which is really important, you know, you want to take up as much real estate usually as possible. That's a really great feature. So, um, okay. um, I have a question for you, buddy. What do you, what happens if yeah. you press the three dots at the top? That, those three dots, mm -hmm. you're going to send it to iMovie at that point. So it just gives you more options. Um, awesome. Yeah. And so, but I'm, what I'm going to show you here is if we bump out of this. And Tim, we're going to get to that. We're going to show, we're going to show you how you can cut the, the middle pieces out too. This is just showing you what you can do within the phone uh, camera app. Uh, and then it gets a little bit more in depth once we get into iMovie. Exactly. So let's jump over to iMovie then and see what it looks like. Um, when you first open iMovie, you really start with this really basic canvas here. You can just go ahead and create project. Um, it gives you the option for creating a trailer, which they have a bunch of these templates. Um, they're really horrible, so I wouldn't even mess with those. Yeah, stick, stick to um, movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to go over here to albums. Um, I have a, an album ready to go with that same video. I'm just going to select that video. 
and um, go to the bottom and hit create movie. And so it's going to import that right into the into this little timeline at the bottom here. So I can scrub through it and I can see um, where it starts and stops. Uh, and then, so I'll kind of bring it over here. Um, if I want to cut this video, I'll select it and then it gives you options down here. So um, you've got options to either split it, um, you can detach the audio, you can duplicate the clip, um, but I'm gonna come over here and just, I'm gonna say split. And so it's gonna cut that little beginning off right there. And I'll just select that clip and then I'll delete it. And that gives me that clean beginning. And then I'll do the same thing at the end here before I- So, before so Michael, I'll let me add it. something here. So when, yeah, when he, when you click, see when he clicks on it and it turns yellow, that's giving you the same option as it does on your phone. So you can either split with the, you can cut it with the scissors or split it with the split button, or you can just squeeze it in. You have you that option that as well. little slider. Yep. Just like that. Correct. Drag it right in. Correct. So you have, you have either option and the split option then gives you the option to um, cut it right in the middle. So if you wanted to cut that clip, if you made a mistake in the begin in the middle of the clip and you want to take out that error, you can then split where that where that issue is and just delete it right out. Correct. And you can and you can take multiple clips uh, from your phone. So like, let's just say, for example, I decided to put together a video and I recorded it in five different clips because I just it was easier for me to say my lines like that. I can put all five clips in there and then merge them all together as if it was all done in one video. It's pretty slick. Absolutely. So once the clip is selected, you've got more options down here. Um, we're on the scissors currently, so that gives you the option to trim some of this um, or uh, you know, cut the beginning and the end. If you move over, then you've got a retiming option. That gives you the ability to speed up or slow down these clips. Um, you know, speeding up can, can serve a, a decent function of, you know, if you're looking to kind of create a little mini time lapse out of something slowing them down is going to be harder especially if you're recording in let's say just like 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second as you slow it down it's going to get real choppy and and uh it's not going to look really good so if you're recording in 60 frames per second you can slow it down and it'll look real smooth but if you're not i wouldn't even worry about that let me give you an example of why you would use this uh i have i have created like hook videos for the beginning of a listing to where just for example uh i was dunking a basketball and so when I was, as I was dunking the basketball, I slowed it down just to kind of give it more of an effect to really grab your attention. And it just made it really cool. Um, the same thing for speeding up. Let's just say you're doing a cooking video, you're doing something like that. Uh, and there's a lot of fluff in the middle that you want to just kind of speed up, but you want to continue to show them what you're doing. That's why you would use this. Yeah, I love that. It's the variety, you know, the variety really is the spice of this stuff. So the more you can change things up, um, whether it's the speed or anything like that. I mean, that's always going to keep people's attention more. Um, you also have the option to add a freeze frame in here. So if you wanted to freeze the frame just for a second or two, you can do that as well. Um, and then as you move over, you've got options for the audio. You can increase the audio levels or, or totally take them down. Uh, and then you can add text. Um, hey, why, while, you're, comes... while you're on, hold on a second, Michael, real quick on the sound. Yeah, uh, Linda asked yep. the question, if you can add music and then crop the song, the answer is yes, you can. Um, iMovie has built in unlicensed music that you can use, that you can play, uh, you can put on to you know, any platform without any problem. They also have sound effects, which is kind of fun. You can play around with that. You can put licensed music on your videos, but you will get muted if you post them to social media. So if you're gonna be using them internally or you're gonna be using them on a personal level, you can use licensed music that you bought through iTunes, for example, or I, you know, whatever, or through whatever app you use. But if you're gonna be posting to social, don't use licensed music, you will get muted. Yeah, or worse, or, <laughs> or worse, worse. Dep depending or on where you go. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, you can add text, uh, some, some motion graphics, some real basic motion graphics, and you can change these motion graphics. Um, if you go over to the, uh, let's see here, over to the little gear icon at the bottom right there, that'll bring up some uh, of your filters, but then you can also choose some of these themes here. And these themes are what kind of dictate the different music that will get played or the different kind of custom motion graphics that you can put on that clip. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll adjust the, the, the filter here to Blockbuster, and then I'll choose this neon theme 
um, I'll put, I'll turn on the theme soundtrack and I'll, let's say I'll turn on the fade in, fade out from black and we'll hit done. And so now you can see that little green bar at the bottom that's added the music, the, the neon themed music. Um, and if I select the clip, now you see I've got a different tech uh, motion graphics option here that is themed to the neon theme. Um, and I can go ahead and just tap on it and I can change the, I can change the text on here to whatever I want. Um, again, this is all very basic stuff, but it at least gives you something on here. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's really well, it, you know. Well, if, let, if, me, let me add, let me, uh, add, yeah, go ahead. let me add a little bit to it, Michael. So, yeah. uh, first of all, somebody asked if you can show how you would add more videos. So if you can show them how you would sure. hit the little plus button here. So yeah. the little plus button, see where it says high LCA, go ahead and hit that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it takes you to where you can choose more clips from your phone. So yep. at this point, he can then choose can whatever he wants. Choose an album at that point and, uh, and import more. You can also import a photo as well. Um, so if you, wanted to do a, um, if you wanted to do a photo and put a kind of a photo, a still photo in the middle of it or at the beginning or the end, um, you can do that as well. So, um, and again, you can add as many as you want. You can add as many clips as you want. If you do these in multiple takes because you, know, you can only get one line out at a time, that's fine. Do it one line at a time leave yourself a little bit of a gap in the beginning, a little bit of a gap at the end, and then bring all of them in, trim them down, and it'll look like you did it all at once. Correct, correct. And um, somebody asked if you can do green screen on your phone. The answer is no, uh, but there are apps for that. And um, we, we might cover that. I, I will tell you one of them. I don't know if we mentioned it on this one. It's called Big View, B-I-G-V-U. Um, that has a green screen feature. Uh, Zoom also has a green screen feature, actually, uh, that you can do as well. Um, let's see what else is that. Is that split option available on Android? That's a Nick question. I, I assume it is, or it's just, it's available in a various video editing apps, correct? Yeah. So the, the split's not built into the camera app, which is all we were really showing, but yeah, any, any basic video editor is going to have a split feature because that's video editing, you know, one-on-one basically. So. Awesome. Hey, uh, Michael, go back to where you got the text so that person can see how they, how you got the text. So, so pull up the, the basic with it where you can show the little T and then show them so so right down here at that. the bottom. Yeah. Yep. And then show them, see how, and then you can scroll and you get those different options of fonts basically. Yep. And then you can choose, you can choose center or lower about where you want the text to be. And then you can, the answer is yes. The question is, can you select the duration of the text to show? Yes. So what you would do is if you wanted to, if you wanted your text to be at the beginning, like an intro, say, high LCA, but you wanted it to, to cut after the first four seconds, we'll split the video at the four seconds, hit the split button, and then the text will just fade away. And then you can then add uh, more text and then you can do it, yeah, exactly, exactly what he's doing right there. And then you can do that as often as you want. So you can have different text coming up through different scenes throughout the entire video. You can also add a transition into the middle of those splits. So if you wanted to uh, you know, slide it from one to the other, It'll slide it over. Yeah. Transitions are Any cool. Other. So you see the little transition, yep. little transition in between the two photos. Uh, you can play around with that as well. Uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, that's that's mm -hmm. fun to play around with and see the different options you have. Cool. I think that yeah. I think that pretty much that pretty that much really covers. does cover the whole thing. Uh, and you know, like it's because it's on a phone and it's made by Apple. It's like you just start tapping, you know, and eventually you're going to be able to figure it out. It's a lot of it's you know, it's pretty intuitive. Um, you know, we were able to teach you here in 15 minutes and that's basically all it does. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a complicated app. And, um, you know, I suggest that everyone, every iPhone user's got it on their phone. I suggest getting it out and trying it out. It's fun. Absolutely. And somebody actually says they do do green screen on their iPhone with iMovie. So I'm not, they might, I wonder if uh, that person is doing it on their phone or if maybe you're doing it on an iPad or a, uh, or a Mac, they might have more features than the, uh, than the actual phone does. I'd like to hear, yeah, what what they're using for that. I I didn't realize you could key out a a green screen on yeah on a mobile device. I don't know that you can on the mobile, but uh, yeah, I've never seen that. Yeah, she yeah, she says you can on her phone, so that's curious. Uh, Tanya, we don't we did not know that. We learned something new today from one of the audience. Thank you for that. Is that are, are we using the the iMovie app? Is that what she's using? Yeah. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, some somebody just says you have to have I, you have to have a certain iOS 13.4.1 for iPhone to get the latest iMovie. So got it. All, okay. All Maybe I need to update my phone then. Uh, yeah, that could be. That's cool. We did not know that. We learned something new today. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's Absolutely. good stuff. All right, Nick, you want to take it back? Yeah, to get back to our slides here. And, and let me just reiterate to everybody, this is a, you know, we're, we're obviously jamming through this. We only have an hour for these webinars, so we don't have a ton of time to go super deep. That's part of the reason why we asked Nick to share this, because you can get super deep if you uh, want to. Right, yeah. And I, I still had a couple other kind of quick uh, recommendations. The, yeah, the one, yeah, so I, you know, I know uh, for the Android uh, users out there, the stuff I show was just built into the, the phone and it's pretty limited. So I mentioned this app earlier, but <clears throat> excuse me, Viva Video. There's a lot of apps out there that do this stuff, but I like this one. It's a vertical edit format. Um, it's got a lot of really powerful features in it. Uh, the free version, you know, you can do quite a bit with, but I, I do kind of, I prefer the paid version just because it allows you to export in full HD and it removes the watermark. Um, but that's the one you can check out. So it's uh, it's going to be more advanced than your typical iMovie would be because iMovie is kind of your, your free built-in app. But obviously, these you know, just kind of continue stacking and getting more complicated. And then uh, we mentioned there's a whole bunch of them. I don't know, Tristan, if any of these are the ones that, that you have in your YouTube video, but different apps are, are you know, handy for different uh, scenarios. So we already mentioned iMovie, um, but, but things like Hyperlapse. You know, Hyperlapse is really just for time-lapse videos. Um, so that can be really handy. It's a, an app by Instagram. Instagram actually has like several of these kind of apps they've put out that do one or two things, but they do them really, really well. And they're super, super simple. So if you're seeing the stuff we're doing and you're going, man, like this is beyond me, I don't want to mess with it. Um, the Instagram <clears throat> editing apps are, are always really handy there. Um, there's a few others on the screen. If you just want to maybe take a, a quick screenshot of that or something, you can, you can reference it later. I'll leave that up for just a second there. I'll throw up the link to the to the YouTube page too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So there's one thing I wanted to mention before we kind of get get into wrapping up here. Um, it has been mentioned already, but this is one. It's kind of my pet peeve, and it, it, I know it drives kind of all of us a little crazy. <clears throat> and that is re respecting copyright. You know, understanding uh, your right to use an image, video, or or a piece of audio. And I think we see this violated the most with songs, right? So we talked about. You know, you post something with a copyrighted song on, uh, you know, Facebook or YouTube, and they're they're going to mute it or reject it altogether. Um, but if those things get through and they get posted, I mean, you can get in a lot of trouble for using things you don't have the rights to. Um, so there are just I want to show this for just a second, which is basically the different uh, places you can go to get copyright, uh, either copyright free or you know, commercial license material. So if you're looking for images, again, this is another one you might want to take a quick. Uh, picture or screenshot of, but you know, you've got your image resources, Pixabay, Pl uh, Pexels, Unsplash, and Wikimedia Commons. Um, mm -hmm. There's definitely a bunch of free options there. So even, you know, you might be tempted to find something and just be, oh my God, this is the perfect picture. Uh, but check these places, see if you can find one that you're legally allowed to use. And we, I would say 90% of the time, find something pretty good. And then music resources, same thing. Uh, both Facebook and YouTube have their own libraries of free music. So it's not going to be the popular songs. You're not going to get on there and find a, you know, a top 100 hot hits or something kind of thing. But you're going to be able to find lots of stuff, you know, kind of a wide range of styles of music that you can add. Um, and then there's some other ones on there. And then one thing people don't think a lot about um, is, is partner with a local musician. I mean, there's all kinds of musicians that want people to use their music. I mean, so you go on SoundCloud in particular, you're going to find some of these folks because it's exposure for them. So they want you to put their stuff in your, in your videos and they're gonna let you use it um, completely for free in a lot of cases. So definitely worth looking into a little bit. So Nick, you know, or else, you know, you, there's a quick question. You know, go ahead. Uh -huh. really, I think it's important. Uh, Linda's asking it. She's saying, how do you recommend sending a video? I've taken, she says, I've taken video walking through a house but can only send if it's 30 seconds or shorter. How do you send the videos to someone? So write down we transfer. That's one of the easiest ones I've found. So it's just W E transfer, right? Um, that one, there's a free version. I think you can send up to two gigabyte files through and basically just put an email address in, you upload it to the website, sends the person an email, it gives them like up to seven days to download it. So there's a time limit. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, you know, and unless you have access to something like Dropbox or Google Drive, those are, those are a couple that, 
um, are also very useful, but we transfer of anything I've seen so far, and I, I see get used by a lot of videographers because it's very straightforward. So that would be the one I'd recommend. But if you have Dropbox or Drive, um, you can just upload it directly to one of those from one device, and then you just pull up that file on any other device and they'll be able to access it from there. Just the one thing I will mention is uh, if you share something through something like a Dropbox or a Google Drive, make sure if someone's gonna take that video and post it on the internet somewhere, that they post the actual video and not the link to Drive. Because <laughs> we see that a lot, like even with our customers, um, we will send them the link and instead of downloading the video and re-uploading it, which is how you should do it, they just post the link and then people can't even access it because they don't have permission to it. And then no one ever sees the video. So just make sure if you do share something and they are gonna share it online, that they keep that in mind. Hey cool. Nick, would you, uh, would you say the text code again? Uh, yeah, I can or should just, or just show it. Well, and while you're going back to that slide folks, let me just give you a little bit of tip. If you guys wanna use the latest music in your videos, I've got two words for you. It's called tick tock. There you go. You can get away with using all kinds of music in TikTok. But since we're doing an editing 101 class right now, I don't want to overwhelm you. It's very advanced editing in TikTok. But that's one of the coolest features of it is you can use whatever music they have, which is like millions of songs. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great point. TikTok's a great, a great resource. Yeah, so one last time, learn video, all one word, don't include the quotes. We should probably edit the quotes out of this. There's no reason for them, but just, just text learn video, one word, 244222, and you will be entered on our uh, tips list. So you will get a bunch of great tips on getting started with video, yeah. Cool. Awesome, uh, last question. Is there any free sites where there are find video clips? Not exactly. Sure oh, uh, where can you find free like stock footage? Clips? Stock footage, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. stock it's, footage. It's yeah. So that yeah, see, none of it's going to be free though. I, uh, most of the stock footage that you're going to, I mean, you may be able to find a few free small things, but I, from my experience, if you're going to, the good stuff you have to pay for. And you know, you know what I find too, is this is just a little tip. Um, when you find something like that, that you want to create or that you want for your videos, just create it yourself. Once, once you figure out how to do some of this editing, create your own quote unquote stock footage, which is just branding you more anyway. Um, and, you know, cause again, depending on what you're going to do, that could totally work in your videos. Right. That's a great point. Very good point guys. Uh, Viva, Viva video. Yeah. When Nick, when does this uh, business video school restart or how is this working right now? Yeah, so we, uh, we launched the first kind of national class this past Monday. Um, so we have, I think, 55 students in it. We, we were trying to cap it at 50, but we had a couple sneak through at the last second. So we expanded a bit. So the next one is going to start uh, a week from now. So next Wednesday. So let me just bump ahead to that slide real quick. Um, so it'll be week weekly on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Uh, CST. So adjust that for your own time zone. Um, so yeah, so I, I guess I can just real quick kind of mention what's in the school for those of you that haven't heard about it. Uh, basically, if you if you like learning this kind of stuff, if you're looking to add video to your business, uh, we put together a 12 week course, and and we do intend to develop more after that. But for now, it's 12 weeks. Um, we get together in a Facebook group, so very similar to, you know, your experience in like a lab coat agent. It's obviously not that big, right? Um, so it's very intimate. So it's, it's really meant to be kind of 50 or less because this is a, it's a shared learning environment. You know, it's very much like going to school um, at any point in time, right? So you're with your peers, you're all learning at the same pace. Uh, one of the cool things we do is we use a watch party format for all the training. So we, we really encourage everyone to be on the training at the scheduled time. It is recorded. They don't have to attend then. But what we saw on Monday, which is really cool, and we've done other beta tests with a couple other groups, is that we had everybody was in it like they were, they were engaging with each other too, right? So you're able to ask you know, questions to your fellow students, get feedback, um, all that kind of stuff. We do exercises throughout the training. So you're trying all the things that we're doing. So for instance, when we do the, the, uh, the class on video editing, we actually have you create a video with us as we're doing it. Um, so that's super handy. And then at the end of each uh, training session, we also have a homework assignment. Every homework assignment is a video project that you can use in your business. You're not required to post them publicly, but you do have something that you could then use in your business. Um, so it's meant to be very interactive. 
Um, and the big thing is accountability. You know, we, we looked into a lot of online training and, you know, we really like the idea of being in a group where your peers are also experiencing the same, you know, let's be honest, kind of awkward process. Learning to get comfortable on camera can be weird. Um, and so you're doing it with people that are going through the same process and you're, and you're very much encouraged to keep trying. And so like, you know, I'm super proud to say like, we've had a lot of people that never made a video in their life and, and they're out there posting stuff on social media now, you know, and they're still not hundred percent comfortable because it takes a while to get there, but you know, they're doing it and it's really having an impact in their business. And that's, that's what we're all about here, you know? So we love sharing as much as this as we can through the webinars, but I, I think accountability is the key here. I mean, all this content you can find on YouTube, right? You want to learn how to do this stuff get on YouTube and you're going to find people to teach you, but we wanted to put something together that kind of keeps people accountable, right? So that's, that's what it's all about. So the next one, um, like I mentioned again, we'll put that back up. Um, it's going to be Wednesdays. It does start a week from today. So there'll be an orientation between now and then. So if you do want to participate, you can go ahead and get signed up at bizvideoschool.com. Um, you can also follow our Facebook page and send us messages. If you do have any questions, just business video school. It's the name of the program. I mean, that's what our Facebook page is called as well. So that's what we do. I love it, guys. Well, thanks for being on. A lot of great information, guys. I loved how you simplified it and how you showed Android first and then you ended up with the better one, iPhone. Yeah, it was right. great. Good job. <laughs> I, like it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> just messing with you guys. We're not gonna, uh, yeah, I know, I'm just letting you have it, Tristan. <laughs> thanks. Dude. I saw that. I was like watching the iMovie. I'm like, yeah, well, that's obviously better than what I did. So. <laughs> You, win you, set, you set yourself up to fail on that one, I think. Totally. Well, I, I wanted to go first because I figured, you know, if I'm showing the basic version, I don't want to go last and look look that much worse, right? Uh, so, guys, uh, be sure to go to bizvideoschool.com and take a look at that. It's it's super powerful and, and super fun. So, lots of great things to learn. Thanks for being on again, guys. We'll do this again in the next 10 days or so. We'll do a, another version of this. Maybe upgrade it or maybe we'll do something else. We've got, we're going to have a whole list. Nick and I have been working on a list of tips or list, list of topics. And then we'll put that out and um, just keep going. All yeah. right, guys. Appreciate all of you. Thank you. Cool. Yep. Great. Talk to you guys. Yeah.